Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use my Planet Blueprint, a tool for quickly creating texture-based planets in Unreal Engine 5.2. It may also work on later versions of Unreal Engine, but at the time that I record this, they don't exist yet, so I don't know. Now, I said that this is texture-based because it requires your own textures to make new planets. With permission, I've included some textures from NASA, SolarSystemScope.com, and some that I made myself. But if you want a more procedural planet creator that doesn't require textures, then check out Planet Creator from MakeMake Make in the Unreal Marketplace. It's awesome, I have it, I love it. I just happen to have a lot of planet textures and I didn't find a great solution for simple texture-based planet creation with light reactive materials, so I made one. Anyway, let's just jump into it and take a look at how it all works. Okay, so here we are in Unreal Engine 5.2 and what we need to do is get the assets that I've created and bring them into this project. And there's a lot of ways you could do that, but probably the simplest way is to copy the files from the stuff you downloaded and move that into the folder for this project. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, so you've downloaded the files. I'm assuming you've done that already and that's why you're watching this. And if you've done that and you've unzipped it, then you've got a bunch of stuff in here. And the stuff we're most concerned with is what's inside of the content folder. So we should double click into there and you can see there's a bunch of stuff there, but the stuff that you really need to grab is right here in Planet. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and choose copy or whatever you do, control C to copy. And then we're gonna open up the folder for our current project. That's the one I'm in right now. And I'm gonna go into the content folder and you can see there's no planet right here. And I'm just gonna hit control V or paste or whatever you wanna do. And you'll see that it adds it into our project down here. So now we've got this planet folder right here. And if we open it up, we can see we've got blueprints, we've got geometry, we've got maps. Uh, which are you know levels essentially we've got materials and we've got textures so let's work at its absolute most basic here and we're going to start with a new level we'll go to file new level and from here we're going to choose an empty level and we're going to choose create then we need to add a directional light for this whole thing to work you need a directional light and you can only have one in your project so we click right there and we go to lights and we choose directional light and then what we're gonna do is go into our blueprints right here, and we're just gonna drag the planet blueprint right here. There's also a low res version with low res textures and low res geometry if you need to work with low resolution, but let's assume you don't. I'm just gonna drag this in. And the first thing you're gonna see is absolutely nothing. So let's reset the position right there. And then we need to zoom out. As we zoom out, we can see our planet. And I had to make it big. There's a lot of reasons for it. And besides planets are big and you're gonna to wanna to work at a larger scope, but I had to make it big because of some of the material interactions. When things get smaller, they don't work quite the same way. And this looks really good as it is. So what we'll do is we'll just grab hold of our directional light and I'm gonna rotate that until we get to something that looks a little more planet-like. And as you can see, it's quite bright, which is not great. So with our light still selected, let's head over to the intensity and set the Lux from 10, let's just set it down to one. And that's looking a lot more like a planet. So I'm gonna double click on the planet here because it helps me center it and then I can rotate around and just wanna kinda of get a different angle there. And I'm gonna select the light again and I'm gonna do it like this. So you can see that we have a really interesting thing happening here, which is that we have a light reactive material. Essentially, what's happening is that when light is touching one side, we see the atmosphere and in the shadows, we see our emissive city lights. Something else to note is that if we select our planet blueprint, you can see that it's actually made up of several different parts. Let me move this down here. We've got our planet, we've got our clouds, we've got our cloud shadow, and we've got our atmosphere. And you can see that each one of these objects has their own material. Let's get a quick look inside the material section right here. We have a folder and we've got masters and instances. The masters are the four materials that everything this blueprint is going to use is based on. However, none of those materials are directly applied to the planet. We're actually using the instance materials. By the way, you can just right click on a material and choose create material instance. That way you don't mess with the master and you can work with uh, a reference copy of it essentially that lets you like work at a much more simple level. Because if I double click on this planet material, you're gonna see, here, let me just make this smaller and more frightening because you're gonna see this very complex material that I've created to create all that cool interaction with the lights and how they react to the, the shadows and whatnot. And you don't wanna mess with this stuff and go in there and try to select the textures and whatnot. The best way to do this is to create an instance. In this case, I've got an instance of this earth here, this material. And if you go in, 
we've got just our textures that you can swap out. You can just pull your textures in and replace these right here. We'll talk about that in, in a little bit. Let me just quickly show you how to change up some things here. So I'm going to close this down for a moment. And you can see I've created a whole bunch of different materials. And if I wanted to create, let's say, a Mars-like planet, and that might have an atmosphere, and it would have a surface, but it might not have clouds. So the first thing I'll do is, let's say I select these clouds and the cloud shadow, right? And I go just a little bit further down here, and you can see that we've got this visible parameter right here under rendering. So I'm going to turn that off. So now I've just got the Earth and the atmosphere. And what I'm going to do is select my planet, and I'm going to just kind of come back up here to the textures, and I'm going to drag in this Mars texture that I created. And I'll show you how to create these from, from the masters or from the uh, reference ones in a moment. But I've gotten this Mars texture, and I also created a Mars atmosphere. So I'll just select the atmosphere right here, and I'll drag that right on to the material right there. And if we let go, we can see that we've got this Mars atmosphere. Now, you may notice that you can sort of see some of the planet right there. And let me just open up the material for a second here, the Mars material. And I actually just added this in at the last minute. I've got this little emissive planet strength thing going on here. And if I want to just have it a little stronger, so let's just pull this down so we can see. I can set up the emissive planet strength to something like, let's say we set it up to five. That's going to be too much. We're going to see that side. But, but sometimes you don't want to have the planet in complete darkness. So I might set that more like to two, you know, or even just one, which is where it is by default, so that we can sort of see just something. And you can also just set it to zero if you want it in complete shadow. Let me just set that back to one. And so we've got our material here, our planet set up. And it's really nice. Uh, I pull in. This is a 4K map. Actually, this is an 8K map. So you can get in pretty close if you want to. But, you know, too close, it starts to fall apart. It's still pretty nice, though. Yeah. Now, let's look at one other thing, which is if I want to create like a moon, in this case, I'll select my planet and the moon doesn't have an atmosphere. What I'll do is I will just head down to where it says atmosphere right here. And I'm going to go down to where it was rendering and visible. And I'll turn that off. And then I can just apply my moon material to this object. So let me just grab hold of the planet there and drop the moon material on there. And we've got a moon. Let me double click on the planet again, get it centered. Okay, not too shabby. Now let's do a little deeper dive into the materials so that you really understand how to use this for your own stuff. If you want to just create an Earth or Mars or the moon, that's cool. But if you want to do something more, then we're going to have to get into the materials a little bit. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to delete this planet and we're going to go right back to um, our blueprints here and I'm going to drop it in again. I'm going to reset the position to zero and then I'm going to go over to my materials. I'm actually going to jump into the instances. So I've got this Earth planet right here. I'm going to drag it over to here and I'm going to choose copy here and I'm going to jump inside. And we're going to look at these materials. So, you know, I've got let me just make this a little smaller. So if I go down over to textures and I can go to Mars right here, you can see I've got different textures than the ones that are here. So I'm going to unlock the diffuse texture and I'm going to drop in the Mars texture. And I'm also going to head over to the uh, emissive and I'm going to tell it to not use an emissive, right? I'm also going to look at the normal bump map. I'm going to just turn that on to unlock it and I'm going to drop this one in. And that matches the planet now. But we've also got this weird stuff that's the uh, specular. So let's just scroll down a little further. And I'm going to tell it to not use a specular texture. But I am going to set the specular color to black. So let's just drop that down. Okay. Twirl that up. And now we've got the Mars planet, right? So we'll click on... Uh, we'll just, just make sure to save the material. And we'll minimize that. And what I'll do is going back to my planet, I'm just going to drop that material that we created, right? So let's just go back to our instances. And this is the, uh, the earth material that we copied. And I'm going to drop that right here. And then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to copy this uh, atmosphere. I'm just going to copy that and jump in there. And this one's easier. I'm just going to set the atmosphere color to more of an orangish color like that. And there are a few other things that we could look at here. 
you know, the there's an atmosphere intensity. Right now it's at the 0.5. If we want to set that up really high, we could set that up to one, which is pretty intense. And let's see what happens when we drop this material on the atmosphere. So let's come let's come back to this in a second. Let's select my atmosphere and let's drop this new material right here onto the atmosphere. And let's deselect it so that we can just see what things look like. And jumping back into this atmosphere, I could see, let's just come down over here, that we have an atmosphere fall off, right? So I can really tighten things up so that it's just on the edge if I want it. And I have an atmosphere edge clamp, which will really keep it tight. If you expand it, then you can see the edge expands. So let's just leave it like that. That's if you want to have something that looks a little more like that. But in any case, you can see now that we've changed these materials and that's it. It was that easy. And I'm just going to select the clouds and the cloud shadow, and I'm just going to turn them off again. So scrolling down, we go to rendering, we turn off visible, and there we go. I mean, it's a little different than we had before because I've tightened up this atmosphere, but if you want it looser, you know, we can just jump back in here and we can set these atmosphere fall off and the atmosphere edge uh, to their defaults. And you can also set the atmosphere intensity down a little bit. And that brings us back to where we were. By the way, always important to hit save all and save everything so you don't lose your work. And it's going to ask me about this level because we didn't name it. Let's call it planet B. And we'll hit save. And yeah, we're good there. Now let's just look at bringing in materials from outside because uh, different material sets are going to use different workflows. There's PBR, so the physically based rendering, and there's even more than one PBR type of workflow. So I'm going to grab something off the internet and I'm going to use that map and see how it all kind of plays out here. If you head over to CG Trader, you can find Shiny Man and he's got these really great planet textures. Some cost money for the 16K ones and then there's the 4K ones and those are free. And they got, they've got like, let's say we click in on uh, one. I'm going to find this like uh, this one. I think this is Exotic Planet. Let's go to this one and take a look at it. And we can see that it's free. We can see that like it's got different textures. We've got a, you know, there's the bump, there's roughness, there's elevation. Uh, he does have some stuff here that's using transparency. And that is going to be interesting uh, in how it kind of interacts with what we're doing here. So let's take a quick look at how we do all of this. So let me you know, download this, do the free download. And once I've downloaded them, let me just create a new folder here. And we'll call this uh, test for what we're working on right here. And I'm going to double click into that. And then I'm going to grab hold of these materials that I downloaded and unzipped. I'm not going to grab them all. There's a bump map that I want. There's clouds. There's the diffuse I want. Uh, I don't need the elevation. I'm going to grab the land mask because that's for the water to make the water shiny. I'm going to grab the roughness, although I'm not 100% sure we're going to need that. And I'm going to grab one of these lights. Let's go with Metropolis. A lot of lights there. And we'll just drag all of that into here. And what happens is that Unreal turns them into uh, maps that we can use. And let's delete our planet here. And let's go over to our blueprints and let's add in a planet again. We're going to start from scratch. And I'm just going to reset the position again. And there's our planet. And we're going to come over to our materials, right? And let's go over to the instances. And we're going to just kind of build from from scratch here, essentially, which is to grab hold of this Earth planet. I'm going to drag this right here. I'm going to copy it here. And I'm going to just call this exoplanet. And hit enter. And I'm going to double click into that. And let's take a look at this. So we're going to work with some of the materials here. Make this bigger. So we've got to grab some of these textures that we brought in and we've got to replace them over here. So I'm just going to go over to back to my textures in the test section here. And it looks like we're going to have to tighten this whole thing up. Let's hit the diffuse texture. Let's replace that with this diffuse right there. Let's go to emissive. We're going to replace this emissive. Now, I want to warn you, um, this emissive has a transparency. And my setup doesn't love transparency, but I did do everything I could to make it work as well as possible. I'd actually suggest that if you have uh, emissive materials that have a transparency, maybe go into Photoshop. You know, go into Photoshop. And in this case, you can see that we've got this emissive material. I would put a black background on there, and then I would just save this out as a 
JPEG or PNG or whatever, but with uh, that's flat that has the black in the background and use that as a material. But in this case, I'm just going to bring in what he's given us here. And it looks pretty good though. Even so it's not perfect, but it would be better, you know, it would be better with transparency. Okay. Another thing we're going to do is head over to the, uh, to the normal bump right here. And we're going to just drag this right into there. And we're going to also go down to the specular and turn this on. And I'm going to drop this in and you're going to see something weird. What's going to happen is that the water stuff around here is all very uh, not shiny and the plant and the planet material, the, the land is shiny. We don't want that. So I've had added this invert specular texture, which will invert it. So now the water is shiny and the planet and the, you know, the material of the land is not shiny. So that's good. And there's also a roughness map here. I don't think we need it, but let me just see what happens if I tell it to use a roughness map and I turn on roughness texture here so that we can uh, unlock it and I drop the roughness map right in there. I mean, I think it's okay. I think we're actually better off uh, not using roughness texture and I think it looks fine without it, but it's up to you. You can also play with the specular weight to make it a little more or less shiny and in roughness, you can actually play with the roughness amount and also kind of work with the two of them together to get somewhere that you like. I think this looks pretty good. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag this new material coming back to our instances. We have our exoplanet right here and I'm just going to select the planet and I'm going to drop this material on it like that. And let's rotate around. We can see what we've got there. And we also have these clouds. So let me just make a copy of our cloud material. We'll make a copy here. We'll call this exo clouds. And we'll jump into that. And you can see we have this cloud material here. Let me come back to our test folder. And you can see I've got these exotic clouds over here. And all I have to do is just select the, the unlock for the cloud material. And I'm just going to drag and drop this on there. And it replaces our clouds. And so if we uh, minimize this and I select my clouds right here, then I can just drag that new material that we've created, which is our exo clouds right here. I'll just drag that onto the clouds right there and we've replaced the clouds and then we'll do the same for our shadow material. So let me just drag it. We'll copy it here. We'll call it exo clouds shadow. And we're going to double click into that and we're just going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to go over to our materials. I'm just going to grab the cloud material here, unlock things and drop this in there. And that will create shadows that match that. And just so you can see, uh, what that's about. Let me go back to our materials here and go into our instances and we have the exo cloud shadow. Um, I'm just going to apply that to the cloud shadow and drag it over to here. And let's sit really tight so we can see what's going on there with the cloud shadows, right? So if I double click on this material, I can try to soften the shadows or not. In this case, I can set it down to one, not soften it. And we can see that here, let's just try to do it with, um, Soften shadows to zero, right? We see what's going on there. I can set that to more like one is a little bit softer, right? So we get really close. We can see just the edges. If I were to set this to like five, we, should, we wouldn't even see that anymore. So it's very minimal. It's a very subtle effect of just giving shadows to it. And I'm even set it to 0.5 in this case. And we can see that gives us a little more definition on those shadows. So again, like let's reset. And if we put it back to uh, soften shadows to 0.5, we can see that there's some shadow there and if you want to change the location of the shadow let's take a look on the shadow right here the cloud shadow there's a rotation of 0.1 degree and 0.1 degree here and you can change this so let's say i set this to 0.5 just to really make it stand out right you can now see that we've got like shadows that are distant from the clouds so they make them look a little bit higher and that's what that's that's about finally don't forget to save your work hit save all there and save selected all the materials that we've done. Don't forget to also save project. And that's it. Hope that this helps you in your work. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz. Thanks for watching.